anybody out there. Welcome, brothers and sisters, fellow human beings traveling on this rapidly heating up speck of dirt floating in the cosmos. You know, I'm generally a mix of optimism and pessimism, but I have to admit that lately the pessimism has been winning out. What's going to hit us first? Nuclear annihilation or slow death from climate change? We are so far. 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 We found out in the last little bit that U.S. military shot down a Syrian fighter jet on a mission to attack ISIS. Yeah. It's all chaos. It's all insanity. Money is in control. Money has become, rather than a unit of exchange, a religion and a way of being. We are reaping what we have sown as a culture. Not just as a culture, but as humans, what have we done? And what we have are endless wars for oil, for opium, for greed, for exploitation. And everything that has been touched in the Middle East has turned to shit. I have watched for all these years, geopolitical situation changes so that the, the Russians were in Afghanistan and that sort of brought down the Soviet Union. Afghanistan is the graveyard of empires. So I guess America's greatest export these days is death. Death by a thousand cuts to its own citizens. Death uh, more instantaneously to black and brown people around the world and those who do not have a voice. The annihilation continues. The ceaseless hoarding of the Earth's bounty, the ceaseless exploitation of fellow human beings by human beings. The endless slaughter that goes on to feed us and feed our bloodthirsty nature as humans, as devourers. But we don't have to be like that. There's a different side of all of us that's more spiritual, that's more in tune with life. And how do we, how do we connect with others who see the damage that we're doing, who see the pain that we're inflicting, and try to do something about it. To form a critical mass to, to make changes, and that you can, you can go through the alternative media and find insane conspiracy theories. This is official UN law, says they want temples and blood sacrifice. Mask the real truth, the control of the internet, which is going to be uh, much more of an issue in the next little while. So if we can't communicate with each other, then it's easier to, to control this genie, the internet that was let out of the bottle was developed by the military and you expect it will be allowed to be used to free humanity from the mental chains of capitalism, of endless exploitation of resources. 
we can develop either, either side of ourselves. We can dis decide to, to follow the caring, nurturing part of us or the destructive, ego-driven, selfish side of us. And ultimately, if you follow the ego-selfish side of things, you will be unhappy. You can be guaranteed unhappiness. Because it's a false self. It's not who we really are as humans. We as, as humans have learned to compete in every area of life. Trained to be warriors. The, the sum of all of my lifetime experiences and trying to find some meaning. And we're living in a nihilistic culture that has no meaning that has no substance, that has no soul. And we're being sickened by it. And everything's poison. And I think that anybody that says, looks back on their life and says they have no regrets is not being honest or is somewhat of a psychopath because life is a learning experience and we, if we stop growing, if we stop learning, and become static and then I don't care what age you are your life has become meaningless one of my earliest childhood memories would have been 1962 when I was five years old I believe yeah five years old and my parents who were World War II survivors were convinced it was the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis that war was inevitable and that we were going to be thrown back into the chaos, the nightmare that they had lived through, and only this time nuclear. And being too young to understand what it was, I remember thinking we had pet budgies in a cage. I thought, well, I'll save the budgies. If, if there's a war, I won't let anybody hurt the budgies. So that was my introduction to geopolitics at the tender age of five. I can also remember the day JFK was killed. I was in grade one. And coming out of the school, my friend ran up to me and said, have you heard, have you heard? The American president has been shot. It didn't really mean very much to me until I got home and realized the enormity of what had just happened. These are things that have shaped me and shaped who I am, events from my childhood that I remember very, very clearly. I can remember the day that Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated. All of these things left a, a deep impression on a developing brain. And everybody's taking sides. Pick your side. There's only about 14 to choose from. And I tell you, I'm sure that uh, many of the people who view these things have opposite views on a lot of things. But it doesn't mean we can't be friends. It doesn't mean we can't have an exchange of ideas. It's when we block our minds to accepting new things and to, to believe your experience is all there is to the world, and to look inward to stop listening. I think that's really a big part of what's going on in the world is people have just stopped listening to each other. And how can we unite to fight climate change, to fight inequality, poverty, and to build a more just society 
when we're all looking inwards, when we're all trying to express our ego and jumping, jumping on top of others to promote our brand. How can we have, be of any use to anybody except the annihilation machine? But the one thing that should perhaps give us some hope is how much people can change and grow. And when we look at the corporate elite, for lack of a better word, corporations, these monstrous, faceless behemoths, they're actually operated by, believe it or not, human beings. And perhaps if those humans could change their consciousness just a little bit, become better human beings as we all try to do. And perhaps there is hope. And I alternate between hope and despair. I have friends on both sides of the, the spectrum, some hopeless optimists, some incurable pessimists. And I guess I just look at it like, well, it's an experience we're having. And all of us are having this experience and where it leads none of us really are certain. But I think there's something inside of all of us that is better, our better nature. And if we can nurture that side of ourselves, if we can encourage it, instead of encouraging blind obedience to the devouring system, perhaps there could be some optimism, some hope. And I'd like to say hello to all the people, the few people, all the people, the people that stick with me and, and still watch the channel. I don't take it for granted and I appreciate the, the kindness that you've shown me. Density, how are you doing? Thought I'd just give you a little shout out because you're one of the ones that's always there and always leaving positive messages and lifting my spirits. And, and here's to the people that lift your spirits even a little bit or make you laugh. Somehow it lightens the load that we all have. So I'd like to say goodbye for this week. And I'll hope you'll keep tuning in. I realize I may not be spectacularly gregorious and exciting. I'm in shock. In shock for the world. Future shock. It's here. What I worried about for decades is here. It's here now. It's not going away. Who knew about all this shit? years ago, environmental catastrophe. But as long as there could be a controlled na narrative on the media convincing people that perhaps the best thing to do was selfishness and, and of course selfishness being portrayed as a virtue. He that dies with the most toys is the biggest asshole in the world. Be well, everybody. Be kind. Be real. And thanks for being there. Have a good week, everybody.